Hi everybody, uh, my name is Shreyas uh, and today we're here to talk about how we can auto-suggest and auto-generate recording rules uh, with the goal of kind of speeding up dashboards and kind of in general, the speeding up query performance. Uh, my name is Shreyas, uh, I'm a technical leader at Chronosphere where we're building a hosted metrics and monitoring platform uh, targeting large scale high throughput use cases. Uh, the platform is built on M3, which is uh, open source uh, kind of remote storage backend uh, for Prometheus. Uh, prior to this, I was at Uber on the observability team, uh, primarily working on alerting and dashboarding. Uh, and yeah, the agenda for today is first kind of we want to lay out the problem statement, talking about uh, high cardinality use cases where aggregation of metrics are useful. Uh, then we'll kind of talk about a couple of different ways where we can actually aggregate metrics uh, to speed dashboards up um, and speed querying up in general. Uh, we follow that up with a demo of uh, how we can make how we, how we can make this possible. Uh, and finally, kind of the goal is to just uh, show how we can make this easy to use. Uh, so first, kind of just setting up the problem statement. Uh, high cardinality metrics uh, is basically kind of uh, the like is is basically the area where we probably want aggregation. Uh, C advisor metrics are kind of a very classic case of high cardinality metrics. Uh, C advisor basically uh, is a way to get resource usage and performance metrics of running containers. Um, so it's essentially like CPU, memory, disk, network traffic, and kind of all kind of the infrastructure level. Uh, things for containers. Uh, this is kind of a very simple, like C advisor dashboard, uh, which is kind of monitoring like 5,000 dot containers uh, and has various metrics on it. Uh, if you kind of look at the dashboard, there's some aggregate metrics and you also kind of have like per pod metrics uh, where you kind of want to look at like the top usage information. So such a dashboard, like just kind of looking at the scale of data, the cardinality of data, you realize that they can come really slow, really quickly. Uh, and this is where kind of like, you can make portions of the dashboard faster by using kind of pre-aggregations. Uh, an example of kind of how C, like C advisor metrics are slow is just looking at something simple like container CPU usage. Uh, container CPU usage just with kind of all the tags that get added by C advisor, like as the metrics are scraped uh, for the same, for the same environment, you kind of have 16,000 series. Uh, and if you just want to kind of just display all of these things, it's going to take 20 seconds to just display them. So any simple kind of uh, operation like doing a sum on these or doing a max of these is basically going to be really, really slow but you probably don't really care about kind of the whole combination of all of these metrics. Uh, so what you can do is, uh, this is an example where you're kind of just taking the same metric and you have aggregated them to just like a couple of different labels. Uh, in this case, a couple of labels we've aggregated them are kind of a cluster and kind of the namespace the container is in. Uh, if you're kind of using namespaces as the place, like as a division of your services or kind of like some form of a, some form of a division, and kind of this gives you uh, like your CPU usage per customer or tenant or some, yeah, uh, some notion of that. So this is probably good enough to tell you how a particular like portion of your uh, code is actually working. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't actually want the underlying series. Like when we actually have an issue uh, within a particular namespace and a cluster, you probably want those underlying like individual series to actually uh, go and like dig deep into that namespace to see what's wrong. Uh, but just from a perspective of kind of what you want from the overview dashboard or something you want to alert on, this is kind of what uh, you would want to see uh, normally. So high cardinality metrics, like as we see, uh, it's just like have many dimensions and can kind of be really slow to query. So really high cardinality metrics are is something that just leads to slowing dashboards. Uh, the cardinality of dimensions can keep increasing. Uh, 
Um, as we add new instances, roll out new images, new instance tags show up, new image tags show up. Uh, these basically result in more number of unique series. Uh, and as these new tags come up, you just keep having like an explosion of the number of series. Um, if you want kind of queries which are like spanning across time, like across days or even like hours when like new rollouts have happened, uh, we just end up like queries just end up capturing more and more underlying series, uh, eventually just leading to slowing dashboards. Uh, so what we see as users is that this dashboard, which is really fast today, like over the next few weeks, just keeps on getting slower. Uh, eventually, it leads to kind of a browser like getting locked up. Uh, and then when you actually want to use these dashboards, an engineer some, then notices this and then realizes, okay, the dashboard needs to be optimized. So how do you actually kind of debug and like approach this problem? Uh, the first step is to kind of figure out which queries are the culprit. Uh, inspecting the requests uh, from a dashboard uh, to look for these slow queries is a good start. Uh, you can do that in one of the browser inspectors like Chrome Inspector or Firefox Inspect panel. Um, but even if you kind of know what these queries are, then kind of you have to associate that back to the panels uh, on a large, a large dashboard. That's not always easy. Uh, another option is to use the Prometheus query log. Uh, which kind of has information of all the queries running in the system. Uh, if you're able to kind of parse that information, then you can kind of associate that back to a dashboard. Uh, but that again is kind of difficult. Uh, so, but once we figure out kind of which are these, which queries are actually the culprit, uh, we actually need to have a second step and we need to decide if we can actually pre aggregate these metrics uh, to actually speed up the queries. Uh, so let's kind of talk about like the different options we have to kind of aggregate metrics. Uh, so recording rules are probably the most obvious option to um, uh, aggregate metrics. Uh, they basically are supported by Prometheus and allow pre-computing like frequently needed uh, or like expensive queries. And they basically store back the aggregate time series to the TSDB. So if you actually want to like query the information you just make like simple queries which just like pulls back a single time series and so the queries get really become really fast uh, once we do that you can just have dashboards go point back to kind of pre-computer time series uh, the really cool thing about recording rules is you basically have the your you basically have the whole, all of like uh, all of promql like functions available to you so you can do like anything as complex as you want uh, to actually do your pre-computation. Uh, an example we give here is we have these two metrics, which is kind of total and available bytes. But if you want a dashboard, which is just gonna show you percentage used, then you can actually write a recording rule, which has, does that, which basically has, uh, which is basically doing a computation of like total minus available divided by total, and then kind of just stores that back in this new metric, and then the dashboard can just query this individual metric. Uh, so recording rules basically to execute and like pre-compute the query at regular intervals, like as you define it, every minute, 30 seconds. Uh, you can probably do it at the same interval that things get scraped. So all your metrics kind of can have the same uh, resolution. Um, the one kind of a couple of downsides are like one probably downside with recording rules is that the underlying time series still need to be stored in the TSDB and the queries accessing many time series can get expensive. So uh, if we are actually aggregating across many, many time series, then the query itself may take tens of seconds. So that kind of determines like how frequently you can actually like uh, run your recording rule queries. Uh, but there are certain situations where we do not necessarily need the underlying metrics uh, and like the raw metrics can be dropped and not stored. Uh, and we know we may not also care about kind of the more complex queries where recording rules are really powerful. So uh, for that kind of, we want to go, I want to go over kind of the M3 aggregation tier, uh, which uh, does not support kind of all the functionality that recording rules does, but kind of does it in a more like, does aggregations in a different style. Uh, so M3 basically is a remote storage for Prometheus. Uh, 
uh, it basically kind of moves the expensive recording rule computation to a streaming aggregation tier. Uh, so it's not running the query engine itself, but rather happens in a streaming aggregation tier before metrics get persisted. Uh, so the aggregator basically allows downsampling, dropping, or aggregating metrics prior to persisting them to kind of uh, remote storage, in this case, M3DB. Um, the aggregation tier allows like two types of uh, aggregations. Uh, one is rollup rules, which allow you to kind of aggregate like across metrics, apply functions like sum, max, et cetera. And then mapping rules, which have a couple of different purposes. For the purpose of uh, this talk, we're just going to talk about them as having the ability to drop metrics. Um, so rollup rules essentially they contain a series of transforms, uh, which are applied in order. Uh, metrics applied to them, like the metrics that that these rollup rules get applied on, kind of depends on a filter match. Uh, now, rollup rules kind of you have like three different steps. The first one is to take a delta. The second one is kind of sum by like the dimensions that you're interested in, um, and then finally kind of create a monotonic, uh, monotonic uh, cumulative counter. Um, yeah. So let's look at kind of what each of these steps actually entail. Uh, the first step uh, here, which is called an increase transform, is basically kind of taking the delta of the underlying series. So the metrics which come in are actually uh, monotonically increasing metrics as uh, all um, as Prometheus counters are. Um, so before they can actually be rolled up, we kind of need to get the deltas to figure out kind of like what the value is at the, at the specific times. So first step kind of like gets you deltas for each of these. And these deltas are kind of sent over to the rollup. Uh, the rollup basically now takes these deltas and then they sum by the unique dimensions uh, specified in the group by. Um, for the container CPU usage, we basically want to sum them up by container name and namespace. So we're gonna just like uh, sum them up by container name and namespace and we want to do an aggregation is just sum. So that's what kind of this rollup step does. Uh, so once we have these kind of delta sums or sums of deltas, uh, the next step is kind of transform them back into the monotonically increasing uh, think, yeah, format that uh, to actually store them, to make them compatible with Prometheus again. Uh, so the last one does basically a cumulative add of these metrics uh, to end up with like an aggregated time series. Uh, this is basically sent to M3DB um, and the namespace essentially identifies like where to actually store this within M3DB. It's a, uh, yeah. So the second thing is now uh, we've been able to roll these up uh, and we've actually been able to roll these up before uh, persisting the raw metrics to storage. Uh, so mapping rules now come in and they kind of allow us to drop these metrics uh, based on a particular filter. Uh, you don't have to do this, but in the case where you kind of don't want the original unaggregated series, uh, this kind of can save a lot of storage space. So if you actually don't want the per container uh, CPU information, then like, or uh, rather, you don't want kind of the other dimensions of the CPU information here, then you can kind of, the summed up metric has already been stored. Um, and you can say like with a similar filter that I just want all the original series to be dropped. So it's just a space saving thing. The other kind of neat thing about doing this is that if we do something like this, we can actually store the aggregate series with the same name as the original metric. So depending on how the dashboard queries are set up, uh, you potentially can speed up dashboards without even making any changes to them. Uh, so quick summary of the aggregation tier uh, essentially allows for ingestion time streaming aggregation. Uh, the metrics can be aggregated or rolled up based on defined rules uh, and raw metrics can basically be dropped based on like whatever matching filters uh, by using mapping rules. Uh, just a quick kind of uh, comparison between both of these. Uh, recording rules, obviously the biggest advantage really is that they're general purpose and kind of support full prompt QL. Uh, they're a bit expensive um, because they run against a query engine, so they may affect other queries. 
Road rules are also expensive, but they just and happen to happen happen to uh, occur kind of at a different stage of the pipeline, so they don't affect kind of queries themselves. Uh, the one kind of thing is like all the data has to be stored, um, so there is a higher storage cost. Um, as against kind of roll up rules where uh, you don't necessarily need to store all the data. Um, so roll up rules in general are kind of more efficient to run as an ingestion time aggregation, or at least kind of it separates it out into a separate uh, separate piece of software. Uh, gives the ability to only store the aggregates. Um, if we only store the aggregates, then you can potentially speed up dashboards and queries uh, because they can have the same metric name. But really the biggest downside is it does not support full prompt QL, uh, but only specific aggregates. So if you have a SEM or a MAX, then Yes, this works really well uh, with kind of more complicated like functions in PromQL, like you want to divide like two different series. Uh, less in our example earlier, then yeah, these don't really work. Now, but either of these cases, um, there are challenges using them. You kind of need to figure out kind of what to pre-compute. Uh, and for that, you need to figure out bad queries by analyzing dashboards. Uh, then you need to kind of configure the aggregation rules, uh, change the dashboard to query for the aggregated metrics. Uh, after you do all that, uh, <clears throat> you may have not gone and changed every panel. So what happens when metric changes or a second panel becomes slow? You end up having to repeat the process all over again. Uh, so really, is it possible to do this automatically? And we're gonna show you a way where we can kind of do something uh, reasonably automatically. Uh, so to start with, uh, we have a couple of graphs here, um, which, uh, which are continuously updating now. Uh, they're generated using this tool, our Palm Remote Bench, which just generates some synthetic metrics. Uh, one is kind of disk usage and the other is a CPU usage metric. Uh, and then uh, have like two queries, which are kind of running uh, max of the disk uh, by a measurement type. Um, below we have two panels for recording rules and we'll show you kind of how these recording rules can get populated uh, automatically. Um, so coming here, we have Prom Remote Bench running, which is like continuously like emitting metrics, which are scraped by a Prometheus instance we have here. And in this tab, we kind of have a high cardinality analyzer that uh, we can actually run. Uh, so we have the analyzer kind of set up to run in a loop. Um, it's going to run the high current analyzer. It's pointing to the query log that Prometheus is running with. Uh, it has a couple of different parameters here, and it's indicating that you have to generate recording rules uh, and push it into kind of the Prometheus high current rules. Uh, and then it curls and kind of reloads the Prometheus config and just kind of keeps doing it. So uh, if you're in the analyzer, what this is gonna do is it's gonna look at the Prometheus query log. It's gonna go figure out kind of which queries are things that it can actually change. Uh, and then based on that, it's gonna go and like generate recording rules. Uh, so if you can see like what this is actually generated, it's basically generated a recording rule through PyCard analyzer group, uh, generated a couple of different rules uh, for kind of both the queries that we have. So if we kind of go back to the dashboard now, uh, we'll actually very soon maybe, let's kind of look at the last five minutes, you kind of see these recording really show up. Uh, so what this is basically done is kind of taken the Prometheus query log, figured out what to do and just automatically kind of added these recording rules. Um, so let's talk a bit about kind of how this is actually possible. So let's kind of jump back uh, to our slides. Um, so fundamentally what we're doing is we're basically analyzing the Prometheus query log um, and making decisions on like how to actually uh, <clears throat> speed, like on making decisions on what to actually speed up. Uh, so we wanna log, so Prometheus query log basically logs all queries run by the PromQL engine. Uh, it, provides like a bunch of times, like the total evaluation time, the amount of time it's spent in the queue, like the preparation time for the query and kind of just the evaluation of the inner kind of expression. 
Uh, so it has detailed information about kind of all steps of the actual query itself. Uh, on the right side is kind of a simple example for a particular query, kind of like how these timings end up showing up. Uh, so what the analyzer does is uh, it's basically an offline process which helps us generate recording or rollup rules. Uh, uses a Prometheus query log to find uh, different candidates for aggregation. Uh, and then it provides recommendations for recording rules or kind of M3 aggregator rollup or mapping rules to kind of speed up expensive queries. Um, how does it actually do this? Uh, it goes over like days of Prometheus query logs. Um, you know, it kind of finds the most commonly hit expensive queries. Uh, how it determines expensive queries is basically kind of evaluation time, like how much time it took to kind of evaluate the query. Um, if the query is expensive, uh, then you kind of need to figure out if it's a candidate for aggregation. Uh, that basically depends on the cost of the query. Is it due to the, like, so the cost of the query is probably due to the number of series, but if we're querying like 10,000 series from the TSDB and we're returning 10,000 series, then there is no aggregation really like worthwhile aggregation to do there. On the other hand, if the query has a bunch of some max or different aggregation functions, or it's doing operations like divides and multiplies, uh, then there's kind of additional cost to just kind of like, uh, other than just, re just retrieving the series. So it kind of goes and looks at um, what gets returned from the query and like how much, how many are there, like how many series, underlying series is the query actually capturing? And based on that, it determines if like it's worthwhile to actually make this. And the application also allows you to like put in a couple of different parameters there. For example, I think in the example we had was we're looking for at least like a couple of queries which have taken more than a second to run. And that's when it uh, like kicks off the optimization. Um, so goal for the tool is to kind of provide pro proposals for recording of rollup rules. Uh, and then users are kind of free to configure these rules as necessary. Uh, if we do end up using recording rules uh, or rollup rules and dashboards and other places kind of need to be changed, uh, need to be changed after that. Uh, but the tool is kind of a baseline thing. And then like you're kind of free to go and like extend it and kind of incorporate it into kind of whatever workflows uh, that makes sense to you. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what the tool is. Uh, some resources, uh, this is a link to where the uh, tool is hosted. Uh, like feel free to kind of take a look and give us suggestions and help us improve it. Uh, a couple of other resources are kind of around like what recording rules are and why they're useful. And uh, there's also a help here on kind of the M3 aggregator. Uh, and yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. And yeah, uh, thanks for being here. And uh, we're open to questions now. Bye-bye.